G'day and welcome to the Ball Boys Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Today we are going through the basics on how to play fantasy basketball. So if this is your first time playing, this is the podcast for you. Let's go! G'day and welcome again to the Ball Boys Fantasy Basketball Podcast. I am your host, Mitch Casey, and you can find me on Twitter at Ball Boys NBA and on Instagram at Ball Boys Fantasy Basketball. Today we are going to go through a, um, a beginner's guide or fantasy basketball 101 podcast just for anyone out there who's looking to start and get into fantasy basketball. Perhaps you're coming across from fantasy football or other fantasy sports, or perhaps you're new to fantasy sports in general. Um, so if you are new and you've just found our channel, um, please uh, or welcome and uh, please consider subscribing because we're going to have lots and lots of fantasy content coming out to help you with your draft and help educate you and, and um, get you on the path to success to doing well in your league. But this is just to get everyone up to date if you're new to uh, fantasy basketball because I know a lot of people come around this time of year. Um, and yeah, just a good place for people to start um, to, to learn the basics and fundamentals. And if you're more experienced, then there might be some good things that you can learn here. If you're maybe um, you know stuck in, used to doing one particular format, we'll cover all different types of formats and the, the different parts of each um each sort of thing for every fantasy bus will set up and we'll go through it together. But um, first things first, if you're brand new to fantasy basketball, in general, what we're trying to do here is we're assembling a team um, of real NBA players on our fantasy rosters. You are going to be the general manager uh, and you're going to be drafting a team of NBA players that help um, their real life stats will correlate to stats on your fantasy team or points to your fantasy team, and then you will compete against the other uh, general managers in your league. So whether that be your mates that you've set up a league with, or uh, online if you're versing other people that you've sort of come across, or whatever the case may be. So um, I guess the main things to, to consider is um, the draft number one. So that's a big thing that we'll talk about, and then what happens once you've then drafted your team and what what the go is, how the scoring systems work, the different type of leagues that you can enter, all the different lingo that you might start to hear, especially on our fantasy uh, podcast. So we're going to get stuck into that today. And um, yeah, so let me know uh, if any comments down below as well. If you have any questions about setting up your league or any advice that you want, if you're brand new, drop it in the comments below. I'll try to get to as many as I possibly can. Um, and then, yeah, make sure you give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new. So let's get stuck into it. Um, I guess the biggest thing to start off with is what kind of league do you want to join? There are probably two main separating categories and then a few subcategories as a result of that. So the first thing we'll, we'll touch on here is uh, Roto Leagues versus Head-to-Head Leagues, okay? So uh, we'll start with the Roto Leagues first. They're probably the least common or the least popular, but also maybe the um, the most fair fantasy leagues just because... Um, the impact of injuries in your playoffs is a bit limited. But the way that a Roto uh, Fantasy League will set up and, and work is that your stats that you accumulate will um, accumulate throughout the entire year and you'll get points based on where you rank amongst the people in your league within each category. So, for example, if I've got um, you know my team here and I'm ahead of every other team in points... I will get, and say I'm in a 10-team league, I will get 10 points because I'm winning the points category. If I'm last in rebounds, though, then I will only get one point for rebound. And that will happen across all your um, nine categories as standard, sometimes eight categories. And at the end of the season, once every um, every team has you know played all of their games and all of their uh, positions have been reached then you will crown the champion. And it starts at the beginning of the season and finishes on the last day of the NBA regular season. Okay, So that's our Roto um, competition. 
most roto competitions will have what we call a games cap. So a games cap just means that it is a number that you will set each position to max out on. For most leagues, it's 82, so 82 games in a regular season. So this means that, for example, for my point guards, I'll have a games cap of 82. So if I have a player who plays all 82 games in my point guard position, then all of their games, all of their stats will count towards that. However, if I am, if I have someone on my bench and say I've got a player in my point guard position that plays one day and then I swap him out, put him on my bench and I put another player into that position and then he plays the second day, well, that's two games contributing towards that game's cap. So for example, that guy that you had as your starter he will only then have the opportunity to contribute 81 games to that um, games cap. The reason that that happens is because we want to try and um, it, it's it's I guess to reduce the the need for streaming, uh, so adding players off and just getting as many games played on every given day so you're not constantly changing your waiver wire and adding different players every different day. Um, but if, for example, you get an injury, so say one of your players gets injured, well then obviously they're not going to be playing all 82 games, then you're going to have to find a replacement to fill in the games that that player misses so that you're not going to fall behind your league. So um, we might get stuck into a bit more of the advanced strategy with those kind of formats in another video, but that's essentially how that works. I probably wouldn't recommend the Roto Leagues for the brand new fantasy um, player because they're a little bit more... Um, challenging. They probably require, obviously, you need to pay attention for the entire season. They go for a bit longer. Um, and um, they're, ob- they're obviously the, the lesser popular um, format that is played. And, and you r- usually require a very balanced approach. Um, so you want to make sure that you're strong in every area of your team. The other... Um, Uh, one that we're going to be talking about here is the head-to-head format. Now, this is by far the most popular format um, and one that we probably spend the most amount of time on on our fantasy basketball channel. Um, So this is where you are versing an opponent every single week. Okay, so each week you're going to have a matchup. You're going head-to-head with that person. And at the end of your matchup, you're going to either win, lose, or draw. Um, And then it depends on... um, you know, if you do it again, we're going to get into this a bit later, but points or categories. But essentially, you're going to have your regular season where you're going to go head to head with your, your teammates or your league mates, and then there'll be a playoff at the end. So at the end of the season, you, you'll you have a designated uh, number of teams that make the playoffs. So for example, if you're in a 12-team league, you might have eight people make the playoffs. So the bottom four teams are out, they're done. The top eight teams will go into a playoffs. And again, just like the NBA, just like um, normal playoffs, you'll get one versus eight, two versus seven, three versus six, four versus five is, is usually pretty typical. Sometimes there might be a bye week if you've got maybe six teams in the playoffs. So one and two might get a bye a week off and then the other teams will play against each other. And then once you are eliminated, if you lose your matchup in the playoffs, you're out, you're done. And if you win, you move on to the next round until there are only two teams left and then a final winner at the very end. Um, This is usually what I would recommend if you're new to fantasy basketball, giving this one a try. It's a really good way to get the competitive juices flowing and verse your mates and get the ultimate bragging rights. Um, And obviously, um, you can adjust when your playoffs are. I usually recommend finishing your playoffs in March. Don't go into April. That's the silly season of the NBA and there'll be so much restings and fake injuries and stuff going on. So I would recommend either finishing on the 19th or 26th of March if you're starting for this season. Um, that would be what I would do there. The other thing that we should discuss with head-to-head leagues is there's a few different types. So you can have things like a weekly changes head-to-head league or a daily changes um, head-to-head league. So in a daily changes, what you're doing is you're changing your starting lineup every day versus on a weekly changes league, you're doing it every week. And usually the typical rollover date for a weekly changes league is it's Sunday to Sunday. So Monday is the start of the week. So Monday will be your first date. So as soon as like the first games usually start on the Monday, your lineup will be locked out for that whole week. So in that kind of format, you need to take into account how many games some of your players are playing. So for example, if I've got LeBron James, he might be playing four games in one week. Excellent. 
the next week he might play two games in that week. So he's obviously going to be, and, and especially when you get down to the bottom of your roster, you might need to make some decisions whether or not you're starting a player or you're benching a player based on how many games they play or if there is an injury or something like that. So um, usually for that one, it's it's a it's a good way to start if you're maybe wanting a bit less of a time commitment. There's a little bit less time that you need to invest in you know, scouring the waiver wire and doing all those streaming ads and things like that. So if you're a bit time poor, the weekly changes league is definitely something that I would recommend. Or if, for example, if you're a returning listener and you've got a lot of fantasy teams and you may be wanting something a bit less um, active, definitely try out a weekly changes league. There's a little bit more, a different strategy involved with that kind of a league. And then for daily changes, obviously, like we said, you're doing it every single day. So, for example, on one day, you might have, there might be 14 NBA games happening on at one time. So, you might have a completely full roster, but the next day, there might be three or four games on. So, there might be only a few players on. So, the players that were on your bench the day before might then be playing the day after. So, then you swap them over and their stats will count. In terms of um, the way that you construct your, your team and your roster... Um, generally, you're going to have your starters and your bench, okay? So for the default settings, usually there's about 10 starters, and I think on most sites, the default bench is three. Sometimes four is is a good bench. I like four bench, so you have 14 players all up, but sometimes I think the default is usually 13. So when you have um, your players on your starters, those are going to be the players that their stats Um, correlate to points or their categories are going to correlate to your categories, right? So your bench, if you've got a full um, list of players playing, the bench players will not contribute to your overall um, stats or or points there. So for example, if we go back to that example where there's 14 games happening on one day, you might have all 14 or all 13 of your players playing. So you'll need to decide whether or not which players are going to go onto your bench and which players are going to be in your um, starting lineup. Um, further into that, you're going to have different positions, okay? So this can vary and usually pretty customizable within each league and and you can sort of set that one up to your liking, but standard settings are usually having a point guard, a shooting guard, a small forward, a power forward, a center. So there's your, your normal five. Then there's usually a guard, a forward as sort of, you know, you can have someone who's designated those positions fitting either that. So either a point guard or shooting guard could go into the guard position. Either a small forward or a power forward can go into the forward positions. Some leagues will have two centers. I wouldn't recommend it. I usually like to just have one center. Um, it's the least common position in the NBA. So I don't see a reason as to why we need to have two of them when we don't have two of other positions. So I think Yahoo in particular defaults to a two center league, but you can change that if you're the commissioner, which I would definitely recommend. And then you're going to have three or or two or three either flex or utility positions. So this is where you can put any player of any position into those spots. Um, and they, they will still contribute to your starting roster. And then after that, then you've got your bench spots. So those ones are there, and like we said before, are not going to be contributing to your overall um, points or scores and things like that. The last thing here with the positions and your team setup is you might also have access to things like an IR spot, which stands for injured reserve, um, or an IR plus. So those things are for when a player gets injured, or say you're drafting someone who is already injured. So let's take, for example, Jaron Jackson Jr., who is uh, known to be returning from foot surgery. So he is going to have an injured tag next to him, his name on all the sites. So when they have that tag, you can then place that player into an injured reserve spot, okay? And then that will free up another spot, another position that you can then add someone on your team without having to drop anyone, okay? Once that player has no longer got that injured tag, you then have the option to reactivate them and put them back into your starters or your bench or whatever it is you want to do. Uh, but you will have to then drop a player so that you meet that those requirements. You can't have an extra player on your team, otherwise the stats won't count. Okay, um, And then the IR plus... Um, is something that they brought in after obviously COVID and things like that. Everyone was out. So that is for someone if you've got like a game time decisions or, or a, um, you know, an out tag. Maybe they're not, they don't have a long term injury, but it's a short term injury or they're in a COVID protocols kind of thing. They're not necessarily injured, but they're out because of those reasons. You can then put them into those spots. So I usually recommend 
usually two to three IR spots per league because we are seeing injuries and things become more and more common in the NBA at the moment, restings and all those kind of things. So perhaps you want to have one IR normal and then one IR plus so that you can just put those players in there and just make sure that you've still got at least some, you know, a full roster and you're not having to drop players that you wouldn't want to drop just because they're injured for a long period of time. And um, it, it keeps it keeps things fun. And obviously, we don't have any control over who's getting injured. It's it's very much a luck thing. So just try to minimize that as much as you can, and it makes it more enjoyable. So those are the rosters and how they're set up. Um, we'll move over to now category leagues versus points leagues. Okay, so this is obviously... Um, One thing that I really enjoy about fantasy basketball, if you're coming over from a fantasy football background, you'll probably be more familiar with the points league setup. So we'll go through that one first. Um, Very similar to a fantasy football, each stat in this format equals a certain amount of points. So for example, if I score a basket, I score two points. Well, there's two points. Um, we'll go through on this one as well. They are customizable. You can change this in your league. Um, but for, for the interest of this video, we're going to go through basically the standard Yahoo point system, which is usually the one that I will reference if I ever do points league content. And we will have a points league mock draft coming out later this week, very soon with Adam King. So stay tuned for that. Um, but this is the standard point system. So up on screen, you'll see here, if you watch along on, on Yahoo, oh, sorry, on YouTube, um, a point equals one point, a rebound equals 1.2 points, an assist equals 1.5 points, a steal and a block both equal three points, and a turnover is negative one point, okay? So the stats are all just converted into points, and again, if you're in that head-to-head league, when you verse your opponent, at the end of the week, you're going to see who has scored the most amount of points based on the stats that an NBA player Um, accumulates through the games in that week, and then the winner will be whoever has scored the most amount of points, okay? So you don't necessarily, in a point system, have to be as conscious on who's getting what kind of stats. You're just trying to get as many points as possible by by any means possible um, in that kind of a format. Efficiency um, and threes and those kind of other categories are not as important in this kind of a format. Um, So the rankings and the value of a player does change dramatically. So again, if you're new to fantasy um, uh, basketball, be very aware when you're looking at videos, if you're looking for advice and things like that about and, and rankings and all those kind of things, be aware that um, those rankings and the projections and the values of players change dramatically depending on the format. So, for example, someone like Ajar Morant is a really, really good points league player. He's someone that should probably go in the first round. But in a category league, because he's not as efficient and he doesn't shoot many threes and those kind of things, he is not as valuable. That's just one example. There are other examples throughout the draft. So, if you are looking for advice and things like that, just be sure to, to um, understand that Points leagues and the value of the players in those leagues is different to a category league um, and and everything like that. So um, the next option, which is my personal favorite, and I think if you're after a good challenge and the best way to enjoy fantasy basketball is the category league, because I think this is the way to do it. Um, I don't think that there's many other fantasy sports out there that has this kind of an option. I think this is pretty unique to fantasy basketball, and I think it it brings along an extra element of strategy. Um, it's all about team building and team construction, which is, again, what we preach a lot about in this uh, podcast and on these videos on YouTube. So category leagues, again, usually you can do this in roto or head-to-head, but in a head-to-head league, a standard um, nine-category setting, which is where we reference most of our rankings, will involve field goal percentage, free throw percentage, three-pointers made, points, rebounds, assists, steals, blocks, and turnovers, okay? So you're going to have nine categories, and every stat that a player accumulates within those nine categories are going to be for that category only, okay? So when I'm going head-to-head against my opponent, if I'm versing a player, I could win um, points, free throw percentage, threes, assists, and steals, So I win five categories. I'm ahead in all those five categories, but I might lose in field goal percentage, rebounds, blocks, and turnovers. So I might lose. So at the end of that that matchup, I've won my week five to four. Okay, so even though he, or or, or if, if I didn't win points, 
but I won other categories, I can still win in those categories there. So this opens up a lot of different strategy things and we're going to go into a bit more. We've obviously got a few more podcasts in, in the the deeper um, strategy element of this, but just to understand on a, on a basic level, all categories are e- are created equal. Okay, so there's no extra points for winning a, a certain category than another. At the end of the day, you just want to be winning as many categories as you possibly can. Um, in a head-to-head league, you also have two options um, to set it up, where you've got a uh, most category league or an each category league. And each category league, if we go back to that example that we were talking about before, if I win those five categories and lose the four categories, on my record, it would then show five, four, zero. Okay, so five categories won, four categories lost, and zero categories tied. So that would be my record. If another team, for example, won eight categories and only lost one, then they would have eight one, zero. So they would be ahead of my team in the standings uh, because they were they won more categories. Okay, but in terms of the playoffs, when it comes down to the playoffs, what you're trying to do is just win the the, the matchup that week and advance. So as soon as you win, even if it's just five four, you will advance. So that is important to keep in mind when we talk about um, strategies such as punting. Okay, so we'll we'll talk a bit more about that in in a second. The other one is the most category setting. So this is where, again, if we go back to that example, if I go five, if I won five categories and I lost four. Well, that just means that I won my week. So on my, my standings, it would just be 1-0. So I won my, my, my matchup. So I'm, I've got a point for winning and I've not lost one. So I've, I'm 1-0. If, for example, there was a draw. So if we both won four categories each and then the ninth category was a tie in the regular season in a, each category league that would go across onto the tie category and the same thing for a, for a most category league. So there are ties allowed during the regular season. When it comes to the playoffs, however, there are usually tiebreakers. So usually I would recommend having the tiebreaker as being the highest seed wins. So whoever finished the regular season as the, the better... Um, the better rank or the better um, seed coming into the playoffs, that's usually what I would recommend being the tiebreaker. But you could also have um, record against your opponents and regular season matchup records and those kind of things um, as tiebreakers as well. So um, just keep that in mind. And again, we we can then start to talk about punting strategies. We're not going to go into in depth with this video, but it's a very core cool part of what um, I like to talk about a lot. It's a very core cool strategy that I think is very valuable to winning your league in a head-to-head format. Not something I recommend for a roto league, but in head-to-heads in categories, punting is definitely something that I would recommend. So I'll, I'll leave a little link to our, our how to punt guide and um, you can check that one out if you want a bit more information on that. But there's a lot of strategy involved when it comes to punting. All right, let's get on to the draft. So now you understand your rules, okay? You sort of know what league it is that you're, you're joining, whether it's a points league, um, a category league, whether it's a roto league or a head-to-head. Um, you know your roster size, how many players are starting, how many players are on the bench. Do you have one or two IR spots? Do you have, when are your playoffs scheduled for? Um, how many teams are in your league? Do you, are you in a 10-team league, a 12-team league, a 30-team league? Um, let's talk about what type of drafts there are. There are probably, there's two main types of drafts. The first one that I'll talk about today, and we'll just skim over because I don't recommend it for beginners, that's our auction drafts. So that's basically where you're going to be given a budget or a salary and anyone can bid for a player. Um, as long as you can afford it within your budget. So the standard budget is usually $200 for a 12-team league. So if I've got $200, I need to fill out my 13 roster spots with that budget, but I can pay however much I want for any player as long as I'm, if I'm the winning bid, if I bid the most, then I get that player. Um, It's the fairest way to draft because obviously everyone has every chance of getting every player, but it's also the most difficult and requires the most amount of strategy. So if you are a beginner, I definitely wouldn't recommend going into this type of draft, especially if you're joining a team where there are people who have played fantasy basketball before because you're probably going to get killed. Uh, You want to be very well... 
uh, versed in fantasy basketball values and things like that, how much to pay for a certain player, how to construct a team. Um, it's definitely, it's it's really fun. Obviously, you can start to talk a lot of smack. They go for a long time is the other thing. Um, but if you're a beginner, I wouldn't recommend going into an auction draft. But for those who are a bit more experienced um, and wanted to give it a try, it is it is a really fun way to draft. And, um, and you can obviously have a bit more opportunity to get the guys that you want. Um, by far the most common, however, is the snake draft format. So again, if you're coming from fantasy football, you're probably familiar with this as well. Obviously, with the snake draft format, you start at one. Let's say you're in a 12-team league. You start at pick one, you go to pick 12, and then whoever had pick 12 will then pick again to start the, the second round, okay? So whoever had pick 12 will then get pick 13, so you'll get back-to-back picks, and then it will snake back the other way. And you'll keep going that kind of that kind of way until you get to the end of your draft, um, so through your first, second, third, etc. kind of rounds there. Um, the draft order is usually determined by some sort of lottery. Um, there's lots of fun ways you can do this. You can do it through a generator. You can pull names out of a hat. You can um, get people betting on horses or whatever it is. You know, I, I've heard a lot of fun, crazy sort of things, people working at their draft lottery system. Um, there's also something where you can do which is called a third round reversal, which is when you get to, I usually recommend it for leagues bigger than 12. So, for example, you'll do the first two rounds as normal. So, picks 1 to 12 and then you snake back around. But then then instead of the third round snaking back the, the way as normal, you're going to go back to the player that was originally drafting at 12 and they're going to start that, that round again and then you continue to snake as normal. The reason you would do that is just because in a... In a bigger league, there's a bigger gap between the players picked at the first of the start, the start of the first round and at the end. So it's just to make things a bit fairer and to give the teams drafting at the end of the that round a, a better chance at being competitive uh, because there's a big advantage in a deeper format. So if I'm in twenty a 20-team 20 league, if I'm picking at pick 20, it's just really, really hard for me to compete with a team that's got the first pick because I just don't have the opportunity to get those really good guys at the start of my draft. So I usually recommend it for leagues that are 14 or bigger. Um, you can do it in a 12-team league, although I, it's up to you guys. I, I don't think it's always necessary for those those kind of size leagues. And 10 and less, I don't think it, I don't think you should really bother because you can still get some good guys in those kind of leagues. Um, and then... The last thing that I'll touch on in terms of different types of league, you've got your redraft league, which is a lot of what we've been talking about, which is just your single season. You do your draft, you you do your regular season, then you have your playoffs in a head-to-head or your roto, you're going to have your championship at the end of the season, and then that's it. Tidy up, okay, winner. If you wanted to do it again next year, you do another draft and you do the exact same thing all over again. You've then also got keeper and dynasty leagues. Now, keeper leagues is where you will have a set amount of players that you can then nominate that if you go into next season, I'm going to keep these amount of players. So for example, you might have a keeper league and you have five keepers in that league. So when it comes to next year, if you're keeping the league open and drafting with the same kind of uh, teammates or league managers, everyone will nominate the five players that they want to keep on their roster. So those players will be taken off the draft board and then you'll be drafting from the pool of players left over. Okay, So that's one way to do that one. And you can nominate however many keepers you want, as little as sort of you know two or three, or you can have as many as sort of eight, nine, ten, however you want to construct it. And then there's the Dynasty League. Okay, So a Dynasty League is where at the end of the, the year, obviously you'll still have your winner and all those kind of things, but you'll also basically keep all the players that are on your roster and bring them over to the following season. Uh, In this kind of a format, you will still have a draft, but it will just really be a rookie draft. So all of the new players coming to the NBA in the the real NBA draft, you will have uh, maybe usually it's about two rounds um, of a draft where you can select those rookies. And again, if you... Usually you would have sort of like a lottery to determine who gets number one pick and those kind of things based on who finished at the end of the, at the bottom of the standings. So in a dynasty league, you're sort of taking very much into account players' ages, um, players' contracts and things like that. You might not necessarily be trying to win that year, but trying to, to tank for a, a, a good pick or something like that or, or gathering young players so that you can compete next year or the year after. Um, so... 
A dynasty league is very much, uh, in my opinion, it's one of the best fantasy experiences that you can have. Again, though, I probably wouldn't recommend it for brand new fantasy players, um, but if you have only done redraft leagues in the past, I would definitely recommend... If, as long as you've got a, a bunch of mates that are committed and have done a lot of fantasy or uh, have put together a few seasons in a row, give Dynasty drafts a try. There are really lots and lots of fun. There's lots of different strategy when it comes to drafting older players or younger players, watching players break out. Um, you know, those decisions, there's usually a lot more activity in trades because people are looking for different things. Um, so Dynasty Leagues, I think they're a really, really good fantasy experience. And um, if you can get some good mates together and, and give that one a go, I def- definitely recommend it and uh, and give it a try. Um so those are those are the different type of types of drafts and leagues that you can get set up. The last thing I wanted to touch on here is just the different fantasy basketball sites and where I would recommend hosting your fantasy leagues. The best and most popular um, site that I would recommend to beginners would be um, Yahoo Fantasy Basketball. It's very user friendly. It's um, customizable enough to get by. And the rankings and things that they provide on there are usually a good enough guide to sort of, if you're brand new, you have no idea what you're kind of doing, um, you can just jump in there and you won't be laughed out of the draft room. Like they're, they're, they're close enough to sort of good value. Um, so I think that Yahoo, it's the most popular, but it's also, I think, probably the best for beginners uh, because of how easy it is to use and the rankings are good enough to get you by. And if you just kind of stick close-ish to those kind of rankings, I think you'll be okay. You'll do all right. You might not win your league, but again, it'll it'll be enough to sort of give you a bit of a guide. And uh, if you want some more information, stick to stick to us and we'll help you out and we'll give you some good sleepers and busts and players that we like or don't like and, and definitely can help you out there. The other fantasy basketball site which I do really like is Fantrax. So Fantrax is, um, it's by far, the best thing it's got going for it is it's by far the most customizable fantasy basketball site so there's a lot of different things you can do especially when it comes to dynasty leagues you can you can basically run 30 team leagues or you can run um, multiple uh, matchups at once so I could be versing four different other teams at in one week which I can't do on Yahoo um, there's lots of other customizable options when it comes to drafting and all those kind of things you can do slow drafts over there if you're in different time zones um, so Fantrax is definitely the most customizable uh, I, in my opinion, the app and the site is not as um, user friendly and and easy to navigate as a Yahoo. But again, I, they are improving each year, in my opinion. So, and again, once you get used to it, I think you'll be okay. Um, their scoring system and their ranking system is a little confusing. I don't understand. In in all of their players, they'll have a designated score. I don't know what that actually means. It it I I no I don't think anyone really knows. So. Um, Again, if you're brand new, it might not give you much value. Um, you can still sort players by ADP, which again, average draft position is um, a good way to sort of gauge on what other people are doing. So that's a decent way to sort of at least sort your board out. Um, so I think that's fine. But I think if you're a more seasoned veteran when it comes to fantasy basketball, this would be the the site that I would recommend. I, I do think that Fantrax is probably the best for for players or if you if you know a little bit more what you're doing and you're not brand new to, to fantasy sports or fantasy basketball. The other two main sites I see out there, I, I wouldn't recommend. Um, ESPN is also another popular one. It's not the best in my opinion because in my experience, their rankings are terrible. Uh, I don't really know how they do their rankings, but if you are new to fantasy basketball and you're relying on their rankings, I think it's going to lead you astray. I don't think you're going to have a very good draft at all if you're using that as just sort of key information. So um, whilst obviously we all know the name ESPN, they're obviously a big brand in, in terms of sports in general, I wouldn't recommend their platform personally um, just because of their rankings alone. The, the user um, sort of friendliness of the site is fine. I think it's it looks nice and, and it's all good there, but... I just, I really think that the rankings and and how they, how often they update their their things is 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 really not the best. So I wouldn't recommend ESPN. And the other one is Sleeper. So again, if you're coming from fantasy football, you might use Sleeper for your drafts over there. But Sleeper is very different to the other other fantasy um, sites because it only offers what they call um, game pick, which is basically. Like we said before, um, you can stream and there'll be multiple different 
um, games on any one week. You might have a player playing four games one week. Sleeper basically means that you pick one game that each of your players play that week, and that's the only game that their stats will count. I really don't like this. I don't think this is what fantasy basketball is about. Um, if you make the decision at the start of the week and then later down the line you find that your player's out and you've already locked in that that's the game they're going to count, well, tough luck. You, you've lost that game. And and it's just it's just hard to project. Basketball is a, is a sport that's obviously played every, every week, every day, different to football, which is obviously just on the weekends. Um, and I just don't think that the way that Sleeper has that set up for their game picks is the best way to experience fantasy basketball, in my opinion. Look, if you're if you're more familiar with fantasy football and you wanted a little bit less of a commitment and, and you wanted to sort of um, just set it for a week, pick the games, and, and you're okay with, you know, Kevin Durant resting randomly on one day and not getting his stats, then sure, you can give it a try. I like the interface. It looks very nice. Um... I think it's pretty user-friendly, but again, you don't get the option of just doing a regular nine-category head-to-head or a points head-to-head league where all games count. Um, You don't have that option over on Sleeper. So for that reason, I think you're going to get a better fantasy basketball experience with either Yahoo or Fantrax. Um, But otherwise, that will do it for us today, guys. We are also going to have another podcast coming out talking a bit more in-depth about snake draft strategy in a bit more detail. So again, that's the most common draft type. So we're going to be discussing that on the next podcast coming up. We've also got some more points league mock drafts. If you're new to fantasy basketball and you want to see what it looks like to draft and the reasons why I'm selecting certain players, check those ones out. Um, If you want a guide to help you with your fantasy league to get you through your draft um, and you want all the information possible, head over to ballboysmba.com and sign up for our season draft guide. It's just $10. It'll cover you for the entire season, the pre-draft and into the season as as well. It's got all of my rankings, um, exclusive question and answer podcasts, um, articles dropping every week or so um, that you can get on there and, and lots and lots of information. All our podcasts are going to be hosted over there as well. So check that one out if you want a bit of extra help with your league. But otherwise, guys, I'll see you next time. Make sure you guys are subscribed, hit the notification bell, thumb up the video and let your mates know about us and uh, we'll catch you guys in the next podcast. Laters. Laters.